Hello and good evening to everyone. I'm Pastor Tim Case from Covenant Life Church in Henrietta, New York. I welcome you and hope that this video will bring you some comfort, some help through this crisis that we're experiencing. Now today, Tuesday, we had some very bad news. News hasn't been great lately anyway, but today was especially bad because they told us that the state and federal guidelines on social distancing, isolation, um, all the requirements that they've given us concerning all the restrictions are going to continue at least for another month. We were all kind of hoping that maybe by Easter or around then, maybe another week or two, and they're saying, nope, we're not there yet. And in New York specifically, where we are, they're saying we haven't yet even seen the worst of it. The number is still growing. We haven't hit the peak yet before it starts to level off and come down and get better. More and more cases, more and more difficult hospitals, more and more full. The news was very grim, very heavy. Different governors came out and said, we're going to keep and in some places, we're going to make them more. In New York City, we're going to make them more. And people are beginning in this situation that's now dragging on. They're beginning to slowly be filled with anxiety and stress and worry and, and thoughts of the future that they're facing not only loneliness and isolation because they're used to being around people, but a lot of them are facing very difficult economic times. I don't know how many families in our own church, people are not working. Several people in the family have simply, their, their places of employment closed. They have no source of income. Well, you can survive no source of income for a week or two, but when it's a month and then two months and maybe three months, and what if my Business is not able to open. Will I find a job? Everybody's looking for work. The prospects, the future is looking very uncertain. Now, I'm not trying to be a prophet of doom. I'm not trying to bring everybody down. I'm painting the picture that we has been painted for us, and it's, it's causing fear to grip people's hearts. It's causing worry and anxiety like it never has. I even have heard in the last week within our own congregation, three different people that know people, that are connected to people, whether family or extended family or close friends, that because of their situation concerning the coronavirus, virus, they've committed suicide. People are desperate. People are scared. And I understand that. So what can we do as believers? Well, it's a myth to say we're not supposed to be fighting these things, that as Christians, well, we're always full of hope and joy and peace and we never have to worry and we just go happy, go lucky through the life and everything's great. Praise the Lord. That's not true. Now, it doesn't mean we're not supposed to fight stress and worry and anxiety and fear and depression. We are. And there is a way to keep them in check and overcome them. And because it's a very multifaceted, many-sided answer, I'm going to summarize it for you to, to you tonight in two things. Just two things. But they're very important. If you want to get through this day with the bad news and the next month, and you want to not be overcome with all the worry and fear and doubt and hopelessness that everybody else has, then let me suggest to you the greatest thing you can do the, the most important thing you can do is to draw near to God like you never have in your life. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And what I mean by this is you need to seek God like you've never sought him before. Think of a man in a foxhole. He's dug a hole in the ground and the bullets are flying and the bombs are exploding and his the, the chances of dying are extremely high. And he cries out to God, where are you? I need you. If you will just get me out of this, please save me. He cries out. He's not going to casually just go, um, Lord, if you're up there, I could use some help and then play cards. He's going to seek God. And that's what I'm saying to all of us. All the videos we've been doing, all the things we've been talking about, about prayer, about reading the Bible, about, about the, seeking God, all of it means you need to strengthen your relationship right now. I'm trying to paint a picture. 
Picture God as the big father and you as the child and there's a thunder and lightning storm and you wake up in the middle of the night and you're scared and you go running into your bedroom and mom and dad are there and you say, can I sleep with you or would you come and lay with me until I fall asleep? Or a child that has a nightmare and their parent comes in and just hugs them and comforts them. In that place, there is peace. There is safety. There is a sense of security, but it's only found in relationship and in closeness to God. You need to draw closer to God than you ever have. And, and I don't mean just, just spending a little more time praying or a little more time reading. I mean you need to make an effort and spend time seeking God. That means sitting and meditating and talking to Him, meditating on Him, on His Word, opening the Bible, praying. You need to spend extra time with God during this time in order to overcome those things. All the other things in the Bible point to that. That's why the greatest commandment is love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your might. What it's saying is sit on His lap and let Him hold you. You've got to draw close to God, but it takes effort. It takes time. These are not just words. And I know that when I say these words and I preached for years, I've said these words and it's gone in one ear and right out the other. Yup, I should spend more time seeking God, but it's so ambiguous and out there and just some idea. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll try to pray before I go to bed. No. Jesus himself would get up in the, in the early morning before it was daylight and go out. Sometimes he would spend all night in prayer. Sometimes he would just get off away from everybody else and just pray. If Christ himself took times out, we need to. And the second thing, and this is so vitally important, just like the first thing is to love God, the second thing is that we are a body, a family, we're members of one another, and we were not and are not meant to go through this alone. Now more than ever is the time to draw strength and encouragement and comfort from each other. Now we can't be in the same physical location, but we don't have to be today. Through every form of electronic connection, whether it's a telephone a video chat, an email, a text, a tweet. I mean, the, the, the possibilities are endless. FaceTime and Zoom and you name it. There's so many ways. Talk to your neighbor across the fence. You don't have to get close. Pick up the phone. My point is we are meant to support each other. We're not meant to try to do this alone. Now, some people will say to me, but I'm more of an introvert. I'm more of a... I don't like to be around people and I'm kind of happy with this situation and I'm enjoying it. It's not about your needs. It's about the people who need you. See, you need to strengthen and encourage and comfort people whether you like to be around them or not. Just like you need encouragement from time to time. God never intended us to be alone. Picture if I was to take right here and cut off my arm at the elbow and lay it on that table. It would wither up, begin to decay, and eventually be gone. Anybody broken off from the body of Christ will eventually wither and die because we're not meant to be alone. And normally we come to church and we're together and everybody's happy and we sing together and we pray together and we talk together. We have social interaction. We talk about each other's needs. We, we encourage each other. But we can't do that right now in the same way. But I'm telling you, the two greatest things you can do is number one, draw close to God. And number two, draw close to your brothers and sisters. Don't isolate yourself. Don't not have contact. You need contact. More than that, they need your contact. And everybody's living their life and doing their thing and they've got all this time at home and they're not spending it seeking God and they're not spending it encouraging each other. you will find that your burden is lightened when you carry someone else's. And that sounds illogical. But if I, if I carry a weight, I'll... Uh, no, when you carry someone else's burden and they carry yours, it's much lighter. All I'm saying is it's on my heart today to encourage you, please, in the day of bad news, as this continues, draw near to God. 
like you never have, like your life depends on it, like you're in that foxhole. And reach out to your brothers and sisters. They need you. And whether you believe it or not or know it or not, you need them. That's my encouragement for today. I'm praying for all of you. The other elders and pastors are praying for you. I don't pray for the whole entire world by name. I don't know everybody, but I do know the members of this church, and I'm praying. So I want to encourage you to pray for each other. Take three names, three families, three people each day. Begin in the morning, finish at night, and carry their names before God all day long. Just three. Three people or three families, and the next day a different three. You won't be finished going through all the names of everybody in our church before this ends. So please, support one another, pray for one another, and if you will draw near to God, he will draw near to you. May God bless you, may he keep you, and I pray that all of us will help each other through this time. Amen.